Good to see everybody checking in with us this morning. Make sure you put a comment down there. We try to give everybody some time to just get uh, logged on and get settled. Get you a cup of coffee. Get settled there. Get your Bible out. That way you can follow along with us if you want to. I'm excited this morning. We got some music back this morning. Miss Anna is here with us. Jeff is here with us. Hi, Miss Susan Aaron. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for being with us. Yes, make sure y'all tell each other hi and good morning. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Make sure y'all love on one another. Good morning, Miss Susan. Sam. How are you, Sam? Janie Manning. How are you, Janie? Sam, you tell Kelly, Cameron, I said hello. Janie, tell Miss Pat, I said hello. Yes, good to see y'all this morning. Good to see you. So glad you could be with us. Yes, we're missing each other, Miss Chan. Mama Richardson is watching us. Good to have you with us this morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hi, Miss Patricia. Good to have you. Buenos dias. Good to have you with us this morning. Good morning. So glad you're with us this morning. I think Miss Sherry out in California has been uh, recruiting some people. Hi, Miss Brooke. Good to see you. Tell Nathan I said hi. Tell little Tommy I said hi. You know, there was a time in my life I used to be called little Tommy. That time's long gone, though. Amen. Yes. Good to see y'all this morning. Make sure you check in. Hi, Miss Pat. Good to see you this morning. Sending out my virtual hugs to you. Hi, Miss Alice. How are you this morning? You and Vernon. Tell Vernon I said hi. Hi, Miss Ann. Ann and Steve. Good to see you guys. Hi, Miss Jan Bolas. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, make sure you check in. Let us know you're here. That way we can just love on you. This is the day the Lord has made. That's right, Miss Bonnie. Hi, Miss Luann. Good to see you this morning. Luann and James, as I call them, St. James. Good to have y'all with us this morning. Everybody get tuned in and get settled down. Hi, Miss Catherine Lawrence. Good to see you this morning. Good morning. Good to have you with us. Good to have you with us. Yes. Yes. It's a beautiful day. It's going to be a beautiful day. Giving people opportunity to check in. Yes. We'll just take just a couple more minutes before we get started. Hi, Miss Harriet. How are you this morning? Good to have you with us. Yes. Yes, Miss Harriet. Harriet and Doug. Harriet and Doug. Good to see you this morning. Make sure you tell Doug I said hi. If he's with you. If he's not, if he's on the road, I understand. <clears throat> yes, good morning, Wahatchee. We are Wahatchee. Just one big old family. Whether if we're together or whether if we're doing this online, we're still Wahatchee. Good morning, Miss Kelly. Good to see you. Yes, amen. Yes. Nancy Greenfield is watching. Good morning, Miss Nancy. How are you this morning? So good to see you. Make sure you tell Joe I said hello. Good to have you watching with us this morning. We're going to have a full house. We're about to bring out some chairs up in this place. Make sure everybody's got a place to sit. Yes, John, it is great to be together in spirit. Yes, it is. I agree. Amen. 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 Ah, oh, Sherry's mom is here. That is awesome. Hi, Mama. How are you, Mom? I call everybody Mom. I think we're the ladies. I call all the ladies Mom. So good to see y'all this morning. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Good to have you here with us this morning. It is. We're going to take 
take just a few more seconds. Give people an opportunity to sign in. If, you sign, if you're just now signing in, make sure you say good morning. Make sure you uh, let us know that you're watching, that you're with us. Make sure you say hi to your church family. Tell them how much you miss them. Yes, yes. Good morning, Miss Nancy. Tell everybody good morning. Love on each other. You know what? We're not going to let no coronavirus keep us apart. No, we're not. We're not going to let no pandemic steal us from the joy of the Lord. Not this morning. No, we're not. We're going to love on one another. Hey, Miss Patricia wants to know where the ice cream and pork chops is. Steve, I want to know that too. Is that Sunday dinner? Amen. So good to see everybody this morning. Miss Julie, good to see you this morning. Make sure you tell Joe, I said hello. Tell the boys, I said hello. Good to have you with us. Good to have you with us. Yes. So good to see you. Miss Julie checking in with us. The Lund family, so awesome. So awesome. Woo, huge pile up when we all get back together. Amen, Miss Brooke. Lots of fried open. Got to have fried open. Yes. Yes. Yes, Miss Judy, I see it. Tracy Harold is watching. Good morning, Miss Tracy. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Sue. So good to see y'all this morning. Everybody's still checking in. Everybody's still checking in. Just giving you a shout out. Yes, we are. So good to see everybody. Oh, it's awesome to be in church with everyone. Yes, it is. Woo, there's such a spirit in this house today. I'm excited. I'm excited. I might, I might preach a little bit. I don't know. It's not to see. But it's so good to see everybody this morning. Let's, uh, let's get ready to uh, start our worship this morning. Let's get ready to start everything. I want to start off, if you will, with just a couple announcements. That way everybody can be caught up on what's going on and, and what's happening. Good morning, Miss Tracy. So good to see you. So good to see you. Uh, we got just a couple announcements. First of all, I want to point out, if you will, on our altar, Miss Kathy Jackson put together our spring floral arrangement. And our altar is just looking amazing this morning. Make sure you tell Miss Kathy uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, it's really beautiful, and uh, we, just, we appreciate her and her dedication and commitment to keeping that done. Also, special thanks to, to Jeff and Anna for being with us this morning. Uh, we thought that this was a good time to bring back some live music, and so uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to continue with the live music, maybe build on it just a little bit as we continue with our services. So. I'm so thankful to them for their commitment and dedication for being with us this morning. Remember on Thursday, Thursday's going to be our Bible study nights, 6 o'clock. I know that this past Thursday, uh, we had a little snafu. Uh, Pastor Tommy had a little accident. He wasn't able to make it to Bible study, so I ask you to forgive me. But we'll get together this Thursday, 6 o'clock. Got some really good stuff that I want us to go through, so make sure you tune in for that. Also, I want to give you an announcement about annual conference this year. Normally, the hosted annual conference takes place in uh, the June, the second weekend of June. So it was set for June the 9th this year. They have uh, host, they have done away with us all gathering together in Lake June, Alaska. And they're going to make conference a virtual conference. And it's going to be online. It's going to be done via the internet. And that's going to happen on June the 23rd at 1 o'clock. If you want to live stream that and watch it, it's just going to be two hours. It's going to be very condensed, very compact, not usual like what conference normally is. So uh, make sure you tune in for that. And that's going to be on June the 23rd. So annual conference has been changed for this year. And also, 
I've got a very special announcement that I want to say about Brother Jeff. Brother Jeff, step over here just a little bit. That way everybody can see. There he goes. Can you see him? Brother Jeff was given a very special honor this week. Jeff was named Teacher of the Year at Northwest High School. Amen. Yeah. Everybody just give him a big shout out. Tell him how proud you are of him. Tell him how much you love him. I'm proud of him. Uh, he, he's always been my Teacher of the Year. Always. So uh, I'm just very proud of him. Just want to give him a shout out. Tell him how awesome he is and thank you for such a doing such a wonderful job with those kids. Let's have a word of prayer and then we're going to get in our time of worship. Uh, Jeff and Anna's going to come with a couple songs. I'm going to come with a message for us today. But uh, I want you to continue praying for Brother Wayne Vincent this morning. We've been praying for him every week. We've just been bathing him in prayer, lifting him up in prayer. Believe in God for healing, for renewal, for restoration for this man as he's still recovering from a very major surgery. So uh, just remember that name in your prayers today. Pray for all those who's affected by this pandemic, uh, all those who's on the front line, all, all the what they call essential people, all those who are afflicted in the hospital who is fighting this illness. But also this morning, I want to add another thing. I want us to pray really hard for the 22 million people who are out of jobs because of what's going on right now. I can't imagine what's happening in the homes of being quarantined, losing your job, not able to pay the bills, not able, not able to buy food. What a horrible time it is for them. And pray for our leaders, our political leaders. I don't care what, what side of the fence politically that you're on. Pray for our leaders that we'll be smart and make smart decisions going forward before we just open up our country. Because we want to make sure that everybody's safe. We want to make sure that everybody's took care of. We want to make sure that these 22 million people have the resources available to be able to feed their families and to take care of themselves during this time. So I'm just putting a shout out to all our political leaders Stop your bickering, stop your arguing, get together, figure out a way to help these folk, and let's help these people. And church, the same goes to you. We've got to step up as a church and figure out a way to help these people. We need to pray really hard. We need to pray really hard. So if you will, let's have a time of prayer. Father, thank you for another glorious day. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray that the Holy Spirit will just take charge now. Father, that you'll take and that you'll use the songs and the music this morning. Touch and soften our hearts. Father, may you take the priest's word. May you penetrate it to the very depths of our soul. May you draw us up close to you today through your word and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And God, we just want to give you glory and we want to give you honor. For we love you this morning, God. We love you this morning, Lord Jesus. We love you this morning, Holy Spirit. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you deserve. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. All right, let's have some song. Y'all yeah, feel free to sing along, sing right where you are. Nobody's listening but you and the Lord, so uh, just let's just celebrate with you. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. Power. Who face the 
when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift that he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Woo! That excites me right there. I know that uh, day of Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday is coming up. We've got a lot to talk about that. Verse 6. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore your kingdom? They said, Lord, is this the end? I mean, have we finally made it to the end? Is this the time that you're going to restore Israel and restore the kingdom of Israel? Is this the time that you told us about? This is what Jesus said to him. Verse 7. He replied, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. We're not supposed to know. But you, he said, but, but, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, I love how he transitions into that. He said, more or less, he said, listen, only God the Father knows when, when all these things are going to come to an end. But let's talk about what you need to be doing in the meantime. He said, you're going to receive power when you receive the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up in a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. And as they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood there among them. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way that you saw him go. Now, this is the passage of scripture to where we get the understanding and the fulfillment of about the ascension of Jesus Christ. And this is very powerful. This is such an important part of our understanding and our relationship with Jesus because Jesus is now leaving this earth after 40 days of spending it after the resurrection. He leaves this earth and he goes to take his rightful place at the right hand of God. And at the right hand of God, he serves as our high priest, our advocate, our intercessor, our prayer answer. Our, our, our friend, the one who supports us, our strengthener, our buckler, anything that you can just sit there and think about how the Jesus interacts in our lives, this happens because he went and took his rightful place at the right hand of the Father. Now, <clears throat> I want to talk about the disciples for just a moment. As this was taking place, and Jesus ascended into heaven, can you just imagine Jesus lifting his arms up and just this, this man just lifted up into the clouds as God took him home? They were standing there and they were looking into the heavens and they were dumbfounded. Their mouths were probably wide open. What is this? What has happened? Is he coming back? How is what's going on? It wasn't until God sent two angels to say, hey, stop looking up. And think about what just took place. Now, when I was in school, that was a long time ago, by the way. When I was in school, anytime that we were reading or studying or doing a lesson, the teacher would always say, hey, take note of what we're learning here. Put you some highlighter on it or make a mark and write this down because this will be on the test. And I so appreciated that about our, my teachers. But when they would stop and say, this is important. You need to pay attention. Write this down. Make a note of it. You need to know this for, for when the test comes and when you'll be able to pass the final exam. 
And that's what I'm talking to you about this morning is about Asa and the task. These disciples were distracted by what just happened. And they lost focus. They were like deers in a headlight. They were so stunned, so shocked. And as I look around today, that's what's happening on a global scale. If you sit down and you watch the news and you watch all the coronavirus things that's coming about and you get caught up in just all the brokenness and ugliness that's going on in this world, it's so easy for us to be like a deer in a headlight, to be like those disciples going there. What are we going to do? What's going on? What's happening? I shared with you before that I don't believe that God just threw a plague down upon us to punish us. Things like this have happened in the past. Pandemics and plagues and these kind of pestilences. What we're experiencing now with the coronavirus is just a process of our broken world that's happening. It's one of those bad things that's happening. But, listen to this. It's happening on such an epic scale. It's happening globally. All around the world, people are being affected by this. And I know that what the enemy will turn and try to use against us for evil that God will take it and turn it to good. And I want you to know that God is with us during this time. He could have stopped it, but he didn't. But he did not forsake us. He did not leave us. He didn't just, just throw us out and say, here, fend for yourselves. But this is happening to us today. And I want you to know that God is watching us. God intervenes and inserts himself in our lives and in these situations in very specific ways. Even though they're happening, he's still there and he's still working. I want you to know that God inserts himself to see what our response is going to be. God is with us and he's wanting us to respond in faith and in hope and in security with him. Instead of us responding with fear and with depression and, and slipping away from him. He is helping us with our response. Our response to what's going on in this world today is so important. And I want you to know that God is there watching us and he has interceded himself, inserted himself right there with us. Seeing what our response is going to be. How are we responding to what is happening? On this world scale. Secondly, he inserts himself with the recovery. So many people are being affected by this, whether it's being sick, whether it's losing a loved one, or whether if you've lost your job or been laid off, or whether that you church, you can't meet together in church and come together and, and be physically together. Everybody is affected by what's going on. And God has inserted himself right there in the recovery to help us make it through this, to help us get to the past this, he's wanting us to know he's right there with us. Listen, if you had told me two months ago that I would be standing in an empty sanctuary talking to a camera, nobody else, I got Jeff laughing behind me back here, that's all right, talking to a camera, nobody else in the church, but yet I'm still talking to so many people and it's not just people in Lookout Valley here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're talking to people all across our community, even as far away as Missouri is in California. That's God inserting himself in the recovery process of what's going on. We need to see that. We need to write that down and tell you, no, hey, woo, this is going to be on the final exam. But here's the key thing about how God inserts himself in what's going on. He inserts himself for response and for recovery, but he also inserts himself for a redemption. There is a redemptive period coming through this and when this is over. Let me talk to you. Let me just share with you, teach you what I'm talking about. Redemption 
is that taking back of what is yours, that purchasing back, that claiming what is yours. And there's so much in this world, there's so much in our communities, there's so much in our families, there's so much in our personal lives that belongs to us and God that has been stolen away. Joy, peace, happiness, unity, harmony, these things have been stolen from us. And I believe that God is doing work right now through this epidemic, this pandemic, to redeem the people of God and the people of this earth so that they can reclaim what he has given us, what he has endured to us, what he said was ours. And we're claiming it not for ourselves, but we're claiming it for his glory and for his honor. We are repossessing those things that the enemy has stolen from us, and we're bringing them back into our lives so that we can have them with God. It's for God. And that is how he inserts himself into our lives through a time such as this. Now let's look back on the notes, if you will. In this passage of scripture, Jesus gave us some very important notes that we needed to highlight. The first note I want you to take note of is how that he promised his disciples he was going to go away. And he did. He said, I'm going to go away. He told his disciples he was going to do that. And he did. Right there in front of their eyes. He kept his promise. And let me stop right there. Jesus fulfills his promises. Everything that God says he's going to do prophetically, everything that God says he's going to do as a promise in your life, he keeps his promises. Don't ever lose faith in that. But he told them he's going to depart, and he did. The second thing, he told them that he had to go away so that the comforter or the Holy Spirit will come. And it did. Ten days later, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell. Thousands of people were born again. And the Holy Spirit brought and gave birth to the church. The church was born out of this. It was raised up. Because Jesus said the comforter must come. And you know what's beautiful about that? You know, in our church alone, we have people with all kind of faith backgrounds. We have Lutheran, Baptist, <laughs> Assemblies of God, Jehovah's Witness, Church of God, Church of Christ, all kind of different faith backgrounds. But when we come together like we are today, it's Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit that makes us one. We are one in him. We are his body. We are his church. We belong to him. And Jesus keeps us together. And that is so beautiful. And that is such a lesson for us to learn during this pandemic. This is not a time for the church to be separated. It's a time for the church to be unified. The third thing I want you to look at that we notes is that Jesus, Jesus promised us he was going to return. Jesus is coming back. Just like he ascended up into a cloud, he's going to come back in a cloud. Now we can sit here and we can uh, hem ha and debate about you know pre-tribulation, post-tribulation, when he's coming back, all the chronological things. But I'm not going to get into that right now. What I'm just going to tell you is that Jesus is coming back. That's the one thing that can't be debated. That's the one thing that can't be questioned. That's the one thing that can't be uh, theologically thought about and, and, and broken up. It's just a fact. He is coming back. 
So if he's coming back, he told us, he said that the Holy Spirit is going to give you power and you are going to be witnesses for me. Here's the test, guys. How are we being witnesses right now during this global event that's happening? How are we being witnesses? Are we passing the test? Are we doing what we are supposed to be doing? Because God's watching. God is watching. Jesus is with us. He's with us. And he is encouraging us. I believe with all my heart. Listen to me, church. I believe with all my heart that there is going to be a revival a great awakening that can come from what we're experiencing right now because of COVID-19. I believe that people are turning their hearts back toward God. I believe that the church is taking notice and realizing the way that it was doing and the way that it was operating was broken and wrong. That we need to change the ways that we serve Almighty Father. It's like we were serving ourselves and not serving God. We need to get back to serving Christ. We need to get back to serving Jesus. We need to get back to being those witnesses that he gave us power to be. Let me talk about that in my closing comments. Right now we're taking the test. The test before us is the coronavirus and how are we handling it. Let's talk about it personally. Is this time of struggle, is this fiery trial, is this time of quarantine and, and social distancing and social isolation? Have we taken this opportunity to draw closer to God? Have we enriched and deepened our prayer life? Have we got into God's word deeper and more intimately than we ever have before? Have we listened and looked for every opportunity that, that the Holy Spirit gives us, whether it be with our family or our friends or a, or a stranger even? You know, on the phone, or if we have to go to Walmart or the Food City, are we taking those opportunities to tell others about how Christ is working in our lives? I want to encourage you, as this thing continues to go on, and it's going to go on for a few more weeks. It may go on for a few months. I have no idea. But I want to encourage you that from this day forward, that you take this opportunity to deepen your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you sit there and say, Pastor Tommy, what does that mean? How does that look? First and foremost, I ask you, have you ever accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you ever said, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I want to follow you and be your disciple. If you haven't done that, do that. Do that right now. Do that today. Don't let another minute go by until you do that. And then when you do that, I want you to say, God, come in my life and work a transformation in me. Take away all the things that keep me from you and bring in more things that bring me to you. Do that work in me. Use this time to draw closer to God. Secondly, are we using this time congregationally like we're supposed to? I believe God is giving us a test, church. He's testing the church. He tells them that you're going to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. Church, we have to go back to what we were initially commissioned to do. And that's to take the gospel of Jesus Christ 
to a lost and broken world. That's what they need right now. They don't need all of our denominational divisions. They don't need all of our hierarchy and our internal squabbles. They don't need any pompous, arrogant, judgmental personalities. I'll tell you what this world needs the church to do. This world needs the church to go back to being what God has commissioned us to be, and that is witnesses for the lost, transformation centers for the believers, universities for those to come and learn so they can deepen and go and teach others. This church, we need to break down these walls. We need to turn these social clubs and, and, and these little gatherings that we do. We need to change our minds and our hearts and turn this building back into a sanctuary of prayer and a hospital for sinners and a learning center for transformation for everyone, for anyone, no matter race, color, creed, background, education level, political affiliation, I don't care. It should be for everybody to be able to come and to draw closer to Jesus. Church, are we going to get that lesson from this. But finally, he talks about an unto the ends of the earth. He's speaking to us personally. He's speaking to us congregationally as a church. But lastly, he's speaking to us missionally. When are we going to get back to being the evangelist and the missionaries and the teachers and the pastors that God has called us to be. That is the test. That is what God is working a redemptive work in us right now. He's wanting us to repossess those things that have been taken from us. He's wanting us to repossess that glorious work of the gospel. He's wanting us to repossess those people that have been stolen and slipped away from the church. He's wanting us to repossess all those things that he has meant for us to have. And it's for his glory and for his honor. Don't be like the disciples. Just gazing up and going, when is this going to end? Be a person who is study for the test, who's ready for the test, and let's take this test and let's ace it. Because when Jesus comes back, I want him to look at every one of us and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into your joy. Enter into what you have been promised. Father, help us right now. Lord, as we come to the close of this service, may the Holy Spirit have liberty. May you come and just grab a hold of our hearts and just pull us up so tight and so close. Father, may we take and take heed and listen and learn about what is happening right now. Use this to transform our lives, to transform our churches so that we can have this revival that you want us to have. I pray this in Jesus' name. We're going to close with song.
Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name.